Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwell, and over there we have John Lewandowski. How are you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. Well, I wish I could say better, but um, just a programming note. Uh, after Friday, I'm a little unsure of how available I will be this weekend, given that it is Memorial Day weekend, and I'm going to see some family members who are no longer with me, um, um, and they were both in the military. I'm going to see some grave, uh, their graves and, and, and say goodbye to some family, and um, it, it's just, uh, I've been putting a lot of stuff off for, for the fans, and I got to get it done. So for that, um, I apologize, Everblades fans, if I cannot get to it uh, off the jump there. Uh, secondary, please do not, if you've seen our background, please, if you have a history of epilepsy seizures or anything, please just, you know, put your phone down and listen to us. Don't look at it. Um, we don't yeah. want to hear nobody. We're just trying to go with a visual effect here for people to brighten the mood. Um, All right. Uh, we've, we've got kind of a bummer for you tonight, folks, uh, if you can't tell our mood. So for that first, uh, I'm going to, you know, talk a little bit about the game. Uh, first off, I missed the whole first period thanks to the OT that was. Um, Toronto and Montreal. Yeah, Toronto and Montreal. I was unable to watch because for whatever reason, <clears throat> the network didn't have it either. So Weird. I, I didn't know where to watch it. They said it was on NHL Network, but then it wasn't. I went to the NHL Network. It wasn't on there. So with that being said, some of the things I missed, um, but I did catch the rest of the game. Um, so first off, uh, I, shots were pretty even. Faceoffs were lopsided um, in favor of Nashville. Both teams, one for one, one for... Nashville one for four, Carolina one for three. Um, one of the things I wanted to, to say before I get any more into this, Brad Richardson. You play bad Richardson, okay? One hit, one block, 100% on the faceoffs. 10 minutes of ice time. You know, that's the lowest of any player, any player, um, Not one player, okay, outside of Lorenz and Jasper Fast and Nino Niederreiter for Carolina. Now, any player for Nashville played less time by two minutes. Oh, wow. He played 10 minutes, five seconds. The next closest was Nick Cousins at 12 minutes, 51 seconds. Nobody else was close. By three, almost four minutes. So you're going to put a guy right. in and take a, a scorer out of the lineup and, and put in a veteran. Yes, I understand he has his upside in the faceoff department, but you're not going to get that. Another thing, Duchesne, Duchesne, two hits, two sh no shots on net. Or two shots. Learn up, two to pass. Hits. Two hits. Fuck, sir. One giveaway, no takeaways, 33% on the faceoff. Either A, we need to trade him, or B, he needs to get cut. He's just not showing up. He's not living up to the hype. He's not living up to his name, and he's definitely not living up to playing Nashville Pled Predators playoff hockey. Yeah. John's an Avalanche fan. If he feels like chiming in here, that's his prerogative. No, not real. I I don't know what to say about his play. He he showed up a couple games, but one thing that really hurt them in every single game that he played in was is he didn't share the puck. He'd be able to create opportunities by himself just would have passed we would have had a scoring opportunity rather than a puck being batted away him turning it over and the opportunities he was trying to create were blind passes to carolina 
Now, if you want to go play for Carolina, we're more than willing to trade you to Carolina. Yeah. But don't sit there and act like you're going to play this particular way and you're going to be the superstar that Nashville needs in the scoring department when you haven't even cracked the top five in their scoring in the three years you've been there. And you're making $8 million where Johansson's in the top five or top five to top 10, maybe even top seven every year. Even this year. Right. So with that being said, you know, I think that's, there's a frustrating part. Now scoring the first goal was Nick Cousins. Like I said, I missed. That's his second of the year with an assist from Halla and Harper. Harper got his first playoff point. Much kudos. I, I like seeing guys who are not particularly known for their uh, passing or scoring ability to get on the score sheet, especially in the playoffs. You need guys to step up, even of if not in their skill set. Um, yeah. Uh, scoring also in the first was Brock McGinn, his third with an assist from Nikas, his third. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to say is, you know, um, there, there was a lot in this game. Let's put it this way. Penalties were four for Nashville, three for the Hurricanes. It should have been probably about five to five. It should have been even because I saw one Nashville penalty that was not called. But when you see... Jewish Roman Yossi. Yeah. Roman Yossi, all I got to say. I mean, your captain. Norris Trophy winner. What, what more do you got to say? Right. All right, scoring in the second period. Obviously, Nashville kind of came out swinging in the second, and it was fairly quickly. Um, McKellar yeah. scored his second of the playoffs. Granlin, re-sign him, get rid of Duchesne. I mean, that pretty much sums it up. You know, it, it, as frustrating as it all sounds, that pretty much sums it up. Guys who who didn't show up last year, showed up this year. Yeah. And and here's the thing. I'm not giving any credit to the coaching because you can't give any credit to the coaching when the coaching's part, part of the reason, you know, guys like Duchesne should have been benched as a punishment for not passing the puck, not creating opportunities. That is what you're paid that $8 million salary to do. You don't need to score 100 goals if you can pass the puck and get 100 assists. Right. Nobody on this t- in that fan base would be mad if he got 100 assists and maybe five goals. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I just think that you you you're trying so hard to be this thing that you're not. It just doesn't work. Um, Johansson, Johansson, another one. He scored on the power play with an assist from Yossi and Grenlin. Grenlin had two points in the game. Yeah. Johansson this season had 50, wait, had 22 points, okay, in 48 games. That's under a point per game, had seven goals, 15 assists, but had six shootout goals. All right. It was perfect on the shootout, sorry. He, he's younger, and he gives you more of an opportunity. Why did we have to go get Duchesne? I mean, here's the thing. You gave up P.K. Subban, a solid defenseman that would have could have stayed there with Ekholm. With Fabro coming in, you could have had him with, with somebody like Harper. And your defense, you wouldn't. nobody would be complaining right now. This team, would no one would complain. The way this team is, no one would complain. It's just something to be said. Right. And and yes, I know PK's fallen off, but PK still would have brought something to this that you wouldn't have thought. Now, look at it this way, okay? And who 
his last games, he had three goals in this series. Okay? So when push came to shove in the playoffs, he showed up. In the playoffs, he had three points. All these pop-ups are driving me nuts. Yeah, you had four points in the playoffs. The only other predator to do so was Ellis and Yossi. Okay. Now, now here's a odd little kind of kooky kicker I want to add in here. Okay. So, Johansson makes eight million. And he definitely showed his value in the playoffs. Granlin's under a one-year contract, slightly older than than Johansson, had four points in the playoffs. Yeah. Eric Halla, 30 years old, old uh, same age as Duchesne, four points in the playoffs. Duchesne himself had three. Yeah. You want to know the kicker and all that is? They all came in though game one and two in Nashville. So right after that trip. Yeah. In his stats, he scored in he had an assist in Carolina and the OT winner. And he had an assist on the OT winner. Then he was a minus one. Game before that minus one. The game before that he he didn't even play. He didn't even show up. Spent 10 minutes on ice. Yeah. $8 million for 10 minutes. I mean, we, I mean honestly, in this offseason, he needs to find himself again. He does. He has not had consistent place since leaving. I, I, I don't know him like that. I, I, I can't speak for what's happened in his life, but definitely over the off season, he needs to reevaluate his performance, where he's at physically, mentally, and hopefully next year we'll either get something or if a traction happens. You know, I wish him the best in his career, but he just didn't show up like we needed him this year. Or last year or the year before that. All right, so in the third period, pop-ups, man, pop-ups. Driving me nuts here. Can't even see the scores. Uh, in the third period, you got – or well, after that, you had Sebastian Ajo. He scored to get it to two to three. Then you got Doug Hamil- Dougie Hamilton. He scores. You go to OT, a minute in, Sebastian Ajo scores. And who's on the ice for that? You, they put out their top line. And we put out our yeah. third? Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't even know that. They put out, we put out, they put out their top line and we put out our third. We were eliminated from the playoffs off of a coaching error. Because I'm not going to take a dang thing away from Soros because Nadalkovic did not have a good night. No, not at all. Nadalkovic stopped 24 or 27 with a save percentage of 0.889. Soros didn't have much better of a night stopping 27 or 31 with a save percentage of 0.871. But, you know, you can't stand on your head all the time. 
Right. Eventually, you get dizzy. Kind of like watching the coaching lineups for this team. Or if you watch the background of me and Todd's lights long enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, obviously we're in good spirits because we believe that there is something to build on, but we got to find it. We got to get rid of the dead weight. Now, here's the right. one thing I will say before I get into any more about this. Because that is a major issue. Jordan Martinuk, NHL, hear probably this whole podcast and every Preds fan when we say this. You headhunted Roman Yossi, and you know it. Yeah. Because if he was in this game, you did not win. Nashville, from the second period on, played without Roman Yossi. Right. Ekholm and Carrier were the top line. Then they had to mix it with Harper, Benning, and Ellis to make up the rest of the time. Yeah. Oh, and that's why. Brian Pochmara. All right. So anybody that knows anything, Brian Pochmara, his father um, was actually a uh, Hartford Whaler. Anybody that knows... The Carolina Hurricanes are the former Hartford Whalers. Yep. Not cool. Now, here's where I get a little frustrated. John McIsaac, Steve Kozari, Andrew Schmidt, Bevan Mills, and Johnny Murray. George Stahl was bleeding on the play. Anytime there's blood on the ice, even get, especially given COVID, play is to be stopped or the player has to go to the bench immediately. Now, that could have been all on Stahl or they didn't get it stitched up properly. That could be a problem. But that all floats back to Carolina and Carolina bitching about the refs. So that kind of made the series unfair the minute Brenda Moore made the complaints about the refs. For those of you, Okay, in the series, all right, I'm talking about infractions from one team to another, meaning penalties that were called, uh, committed from one team to another. I'm not talking like delay a game, roughing, or fighting. Right. Calls were 15, 13. Including the delay of game, it's in the 20s for Carolina. Right. Carolina had four delay of game penalties, including, I believe, a roughing that there was nothing on Nashville for. But, I mean, it's just – it's it's to a point where you're just like, what are you doing? Now, here's the other part. Sitting out tonight, Illy Tolvanen. Losing Victor Arvidsson was huge. Not playing Dante Fabro at all. And zero Rocco Grimaldi. That is what cost you this game. That is my personal opinion. And I'm sticking to it. Three stars of the game. Ryan Johansson, third star. UC Saro, second star. Jacob Slavin, first star. Game winning goal. According to this now, it changed again. Nope, now they changed it back. What, what do they not know who scored this goal? 
Apparently, it's, not. it's changed twice in the time that we've been filming. Aho had five goals. Slavin had three points in two games. I'm going to say this. The Carolina team I watched years ago, this is not how they played. Reminds me of the 96 Red Wing. Yeah, they were, yeah, it was really bad. It, it reminded me of the Gretzky era, era Oilers, where you <laughs> did everything you could to cheat. But because you had a star, they never called anything. Right. Nashville's never really had that put away face of the NHL star, a guy that they're going to put on Sports Center, except for maybe Forsberg. Right. Both of them, Peter and Philip. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say now Carolina gets the unfortunate task of going head to head with Tampa Bay. Yeah. Um, Boston goes with the Islanders. I see Boston coming out of that one. Right. Tampa Bay, it's a 50-50 shot, but I don't see it. going to have to have a stellar series. Yeah. Carol, to, to get Tampa Bay, Carolina is going to have to not have the issues they have right now. And I'm sorry to say this, but Tampa Bay's got much better goaltending than what they just faced. Not that Saros isn't a great goaltender. I'm not taking that away from him. What I'm saying is he's Amazing not Amazing tonight. Not at the level of Vasilevsky yet. Right. Um, There's still room for development. It seems to get better every year, Saros does. Anyway, obviously, given the current situation, so we have those, you know, the West is all done. We got uh, game seven tomorrow, Vegas and Minnesota, Toronto and Montreal. You guys will see brackets from us, but we won't be covering any more playoff games uh, as far as the NHL is concerned. Um, right. Uh as far as that, right now, we're about to throw ourselves all into the Everblades as they make their push for the Cali Cup. So, Preds fans, jump on. Well, you can go on down to Esturo. Sell that building out if you can. Because I have I... Nashville tomorrow morning. We'll be sending a ton of guys down there. Probably. To help them with their push for the playoffs. Now, it's kind of not fair if Jano goes down there. <laughs> <laughs> he will one man wreck the entire ECHL. Let me let uh, Ovechkin out there. No, Ovechkin just by himself. Janot kind of needs people around him. But I'm saying, you put Ovechkin out there against the ECHL, he's just going to clown everybody. All you need is Ovechkin and a goalie. But, I mean, when you when you sit there and talk about this, that's one of the big things. Now, one of the other differences we wanted to talk about going forward is um, our thoughts and, and everything are with the families of anyone who has lost a loved one in, in the um, – uh, battle of war uh, memorial day is yep. and it does weigh heavy on a lot of people's hearts thinking of the loved ones who never came home um, i have friends that didn't um i have family who you know much before i was around didn't uh, my family go right the military all the way back to world uh to the civil war and uh they weren't really part of like the Civil War. They just defended our land, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, they right. stay away from our land. You know, we don't want it here. We don't care what side you're on. Don't bring it here, kind of thing. 
yeah, don't bring your mess here. And and that was how I, I've read up a lot on my family's history. We've been very anti-political as far as that stuff goes, which is how we like our show. But at the end of the day, Memorial Day is a day to honor the troops. Um, you know, uh, Memorial Day was created based on the fact that the president back in the day would put a wreath <sighs> at the uh, tomb of the unknown soldiers who were wounded in, or died in battle. And uh, it is to honor those who, who have fallen in battle uh, so that we could speak right. freely and do this podcast. Not particularly this podcast, yep. but we can speak freely and giving us room right. to do stuff like this. Um, in other news, Konstantin Volkov has signed with a team in the SHL. Therefore, since the uh, team he signed with has no agreement rights, he would have to sign a contract with Nashville and be assigned there. Right. And that's not looking like that's going to happen with the goalies we did sign. So with that being said, because he could come here for camp and go, I'm staying. Right. Kind of pigeonholing Nashville. <sighs> so it's not really a big loss because he was like a sixth round pick. And he's way behind in development. Good stats right. behind in development. I mean, you're playing in the VHL when you should be in the MHL. You're behind in the development. And that could be to the Russian right. game. It could be because of his personality. I don't know, but we're going to find out soon um, what's going to become of everything because I'm pretty sure we're going to have some press conferences tomorrow giving us more content tomorrow. Um, we will be wrapping up the rest of the Preds playoffs, our thoughts and everything. After Memorial Day weekend, we will wrap that all up. I hope you guys enjoy our three and three Everblades footage coming this weekend. Yep. Um, I know Sunday I will be hit or miss, but I'm going to try and be on tomorrow and Saturday's show. And if I remember correctly, me and John are going to try and quickly figure out a way to get back in the same room at some point <laughs> so that we can right. get mm -hmm. find folks who watch us and communicate with us. Thank you all so much. This wraps yes, up the third you. season covering the Predators. My third season. Wow. Huh. Mm -hmm. My third year. You know, Thinking about it, where I came from, where I just wanted to choke the team half the time my first year, and second year, I just <laughs> wanted to rip my hair out and run away because COVID wouldn't go away. You know, this year, it was a little easier, but I can't wait till we get back to real hockey, full fans, full crowd. We're back at Admiral's games. Trust me, we're all yep. looking forward to it. Um, but check us out tomorrow. We got Florida Everblades game coming. I do not remember their opponent. Um, Orlando. Huh? Orlando uh, Solar Bears. Yep, the Orlando Solar Bears all weekend long. And then we play the Greensville Swamp Rabbits next week on Wednesday. And then back to Orlando on Saturday to wrap up the Everblades season. So we got some yep. wrapping it up here. So, folks, it's getting towards that time of year where hockey comes to an end. It's weird saying that in almost June. But, right, right. You know, normally that's an April thing. Hopefully. Yeah. Get back to it being a late April thing and no more delays like this. But we hope your show, we hope you guys enjoy the show. We'll be seeing you guys shortly. Um, everybody, enjoy your Friday and your Memorial Day weekend. If you yes. want, please 
We will be putting out a photo on Sunday in the morning, uh, some kind of Memorial Day kind of thing. But also, I'm going to make a post, post your barbecue. We all want to see what everybody's eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sunday, post your barbecue on our page. Um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll be uh, picking some of our favorites, and uh, on, on on Memorial Day itself, we'll be congratulating those folks on best barbecue. Uh, but on behalf of us at from Milwaukee. Yeah. Also, uh, if you don't have Facebook but you do have Twitter, I will be posting it over there on on my Twitter page uh, uh, that I run for our page. And John has one now too. It's uh, from Milwaukee, uh, from M or MKE Two Nash, co-host, all one. But we're working ourselves off here, and it is it'll be a long day for me tomorrow. So I'm gonna talk to y'all. Uh, talk to y'all tomorrow night. Talk to y'all later. Peace.